This is Scorpion Talk, Episode 1, Conversation Starter. Let's hit the range. This footage was captured at the beautiful banner shooting range, and it was one of those, is this heaven? No, it's Iowa days. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of background noise you're going to have to contend with on this one. Sorry about that. Heaven. So right off the bat, you'll probably look at that target and say, wow, that group, while it looks pretty precise, it's probably quite a bit higher than center mass you were aiming at, and you would be correct. Before going to the range today, I put Vortex Crossfire, I have three of those, and I put one on my Scorpion pistol, my Scorpion carbine, and then an AR pistol that I have. I then at least thought I bore sighted them in, and as you can see in this case, based off the bore sighting alone at 25 yards, I was way off. So I cited that in and we cut that out of this video. We made a few sight adjustments, and as you can see, after doing so, we were then hitting where we expected to on the silhouette target. Now as Murphy's Law would have it, we had then went to shoot our Scorpion carbine, and the battery in our uh, Vortex Crossfire on that one died on me with midway through the first magazine. Now the spares that I had in my bag, or at least I thought I had in my bag, turns out were not the appropriate size for that sight. Oops. So I removed the sight to not confuse the viewer. Now in shooting the carbine here, we're going to be shooting with the iron sights. Now one thing to keep in mind here is I zeroed this rifle years ago using a different brand and weight of ammo and as a result we have seen an impact shift slightly to the right and up of where I would normally shoot with the ammo I zeroed this rifle with. Now other than the point of impact shift I would say we see otherwise for me what would be a pretty good group for shooting iron sights at 50 yards at an 8 inch target. For comparison's sake, we are going to shoot the same ammo out of the Scorpion, quote, pistol this time, and we are going to shoot uh, the first, I believe it's 17 rounds using the uh, red dot only, and then the next 18 using the quick flip magnifier. This is also using the newer Magtech 35 round magazine.
And at looking at that target, I would say the pistol version of the Scorpion and our zeroing of it previously in the day held up well pushing the target out to 50 yards. As often happens when you go shooting sans the crew, you don't have anyone present to help tell you when your cameras aren't recording. So unfortunately for this next section, not only did I get the point of view cam out of sync, but also target cam was not recording like I expected. Now what we tested here was 35 rounds out of the Magpul magazine in the carbine using the questionable ammo from the bullet bucket. If you watch this channel before, you know what I'm talking about as far as that ammo. After that, we then test out a drum through of the F5 manufacturing 50 round drum through my Scorpion pistol. Now up until this point, I think I've only been able to get 49 rounds into that drum. Though since shooting this video, I was actually able to reload it fully with 50. Looking forward to doing that next time. Because we don't have target cam or, or point of view cam, I'm going to speed up these two clicks to five times speed. Uh, so hope that doesn't confuse you. And now, how about a little more range time? Here's some accidental footage I captured. We might as well use it to give you an idea of the awesome facilities we have available here at the DNR facilities at Banner Range. And then at the end, we'll get a glimpse of my targets that hopefully are useful in assessing the accuracy of those two uh, clips there. Might as well clean up these targets. I don't think the next shooter is going to get any use out of them being there. There's not much life left in those targets, in my opinion. Here's a shot of some of the magazines I took to the range before getting video for this video. As you can see on the left we have the 20 round CZ factory magazines, then the 30 round CZ magazine, a 35 round Magpul magazine, two of those, and then the 50 round FM, or excuse me, F5 manufacturing 50 round drum magazine. Off of my postage scale, on average the loaded 20 round magazine comes in around 11 ounces a loaded 30 round magazine is around one pound a loaded 35 round magpul magazine is around one pound three ounces and a fully loaded 50 round f5 manufacturing 50 round drum comes in at two pounds 11 ounces now i only have the one of those to measure so i can't put an approximately on it so I'm going to assume the others are like that. I don't know. You'll have to correct me in the comments if I'm way off on that front. Now, a natural question fans of capacity might ask is, when you can get a 50-round drum, why would you go with anything less than 50? Now, that's a good question, and I'm going to try to answer that question, at least in regard to my experience and personal preferences. Now, one area where you could have a issue and I've done this a few times not recently because most of the ranges don't allow rapid fire that I go to but when I first got this drum and tested it I was able to fire this drum faster than what it was able to feed ammo into my scorpion 
So I basically was able to overrun it, if you will. Now another area that would be a concern would be weight. At two pounds, 11 ounces for 50 rounds, I could carry two manufacturer 30 round magazines and one manufacturer 20 round magazines at the same weight, which would give you a 30 round advantage for the same weight. And of course you could also carry two of the Magpul 35 round magazines to give you 70, so 10 less and a little lighter uh, you know, payload in that package. Now the Magpul 35 round magazine compared to the CZ magazines, while that five extra rounds I think is nice, and so far I've had zero issues with reliability on any of these magazines. The one area where I think the CZ ones still are very nice is that they are see-through so you can visually see how many rounds you left, have left and how many are loaded in there. Now with the Magpul magazines and of course with the uh, manufacturer CZ magazines, you do get the lock hold open on empty or the bolt will lock open when the magazine is empty. So far with my F5 manufacturing 50 round drum, I do not get a hold open on empty, which if you're used to that, that can be a little uh, jarring, I would say. Now another area that I feel like I should mention is, for me, it takes a long time to load that 50 round drum. It's quite a procedure as far as winding the spring and loading it, and it's quite time consuming. I could probably load a box full of other Scorpion magazines in the time that it takes me to load my one drum magazine. It's quite laborious in my opinion, but it's necessary for how that winding spring works to do the uh, you know, 50 rounds in that circle drum. But that is also the same thing that, you know, if you're quick enough, you can outrun it. And since we're on the topic of drums and fun, uh, because they are quite fun, I'm going to be honest. If you're going to, if you have the ability to get a drum, get one. They're fun for at the range when you just want to put, you know, 50 rounds down range and not have to reload. But one thing to watch out for, because they are fun, and because a lot of you know, I would say a tendency if you're going to get a drum is then you're going to want something like a binary trigger or something else to fire your Scorpion really fast is with the announcement of the new Scorpion, I think three that's coming out, you're probably going to see some of the Scorpion pistol and carbine used versions on the market. And one thing you want to watch out for is a problem that can happen with both the pistol and the carbine version is when something like a binary trigger is used to make the scorpion fire at a very high rate of fire as a non fully automatic version the fully automatic version has a safety mechanism that will prevent the firearm from firing unless the bolt is fully closed which in the civilian version that's not the case and when the gun gets firing extremely fast it's actually possible to have a situation where the gun could fire out of battery which can crack the frame so if you're buying one used, you definitely want to inspect it, especially if it's one, I would say, that has any hint of being customized or shows a lot of customization. And frankly, if I was going to buy one used, it would be the first thing I would look for. And if a store would not let me take it apart to look at it, I would just instantly nope out of it. Now if we ignore the brace versus stock debate that we're not going to wade into, and then the subtle difference between grip between the two firearms. In my opinion, the major difference between these two comes down to barrel length. My carbine scorpion has a barrel length of 16.2 inches, whereas my pistol scorpion has a barrel length of 7.7 .7 inches. Now you'll notice both my pistol version and my carbine version have the same handguard on them. When I purchased my pistol version, the only pistol version I could get was the uh, version with the suppressor ready faux suppressor and that extended handguard on the front now i was okay with that though at the time i did not realize it was actually identical in length in that regard to my already existing carbine version i thought it was a little smaller turns out i was wrong oops the carbine version of the scorpion comes with the folding extendable stock and i think that's actually a, a fine stock the folding stock folds to make it a very compact traveling firearm and then uh, locks in place with an extending uh, butt plate to where you can really, depending on your size, make it accommodate your frame. Now my pistol version came with a sling mount. As you can see I have replaced that, that with a CZ Custom uh, brace mount. 
I put the brace mount on there because a friend of the channel sent us this SB Tactical Brace to uh, basically <laughs> check out on the Scorpion, so we're doing so. Both my pistol and carbine came with the CZ front and rear sights. From what I understand, they have since started using, in some cases, Magpul sights instead. Now another thing you'll notice is on my pistol version, I do have a flashlight, a sure fire flashlight mounted on that for, you could consider this say my home defense uh, carbine or pistol, quote pistol. Now you might have noticed a mini rail uh, that I have attached to the M-Lock slots on my carbine version. Before I had my pistol uh, scorpion, I mounted my flashlight to that mount point instead, which is an optional, I added that to the M-Lock slots. In my experience, the ranges most people are likely to shoot these firearms, we'll say 50 yards and in, it's hard to distinguish the difference for your average shooter between the carbine and the pistol length barrel versions of these. There is a micro version of the Scorpion you can find or create, and I suspect you probably would notice a difference on that at, say, 50 yards compared to these two. But on these two, I don't think that really comes into play. Though at 100 yards and beyond, I do think you definitely start to notice a difference where that carbine length barrel comes in to play. Now that being said, there are two areas where I actually find there to be quite a significant difference between the pistol and the carbine length scorpion. Now on average, I drop the sound on our shooting videos about 20 decibels when we're shooting. And, you know, cameras also come into play, so I don't know if you would be able to pick it up. But from the shooter... There is no doubt that, and these are faux suppressors again on both these, they're fake. They actually serve no purpose other than cosmetics and to sit there in place of when I get a real suppressor. But the carbine length Scorpion is significantly quieter in terms, when, at least when I shoot somewhere like Banner where there are barricades and things around, than my pistol length Scorpion. I would say like it seems like half as loud. I don't have a, I could just get a meter, but to my untrained ear that has no empirical measurement it seemed half as loud compared to the pistol version now another area where there is a difference and I didn't expect it to be as much as it is is in terms of recoil essentially being the same gun with different barrel length with that same blowback operation and gigantor bolt you would expect that to be very similar and while it is similar in my experience the carbine length version actually has a more mild recoil if that can be said compared to the pistol length version. Now that's not to say that say the the recoil is unpleasant or mild. It does have recoil. You do feel it. That big bolt and that hunk of mass moving around, you do feel it at the end of the day when you put hundreds of rounds through one of these firearms. Though in my experience, I think it is slightly less taxing shooting the carving version compared to the pistol version in that regard. So while we set out to get footage for a different style video for episode one, I think we still got enough video to get a fun start going and at least get that discussion going. Now we have been collecting a few different types of ammo to put through their paces through these firearms. And I also have a couple different sites collected to put on there to see how they perform to see if they make a difference or what might work best or not work very well on these. So if there's something you'd like to see fired on these firearms or a particular ammo that you'd like to see tested through them or in a particular situation like say a me target, we might plan on doing it. And if you're interested in it, definitely post it in the comments. Well, I hope you found this first episode useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a good day.